we're back in the saddle. We had a nice little warm up. We're lathered, ready to go. <laughs> we did. We are back in the saddle. It's July 2nd, the year. It's 2024. Welcome aboard, everybody. You listen to the Crushing Iron Podcast. And this is episode 778. 79. 79. Yeah. 779. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. don't cut us short here. 779 on our way to 800, on our way to 1,000. Hope you've all had a, a great week so far. Half of you, at least half of you, pretty much mailing it in this week with July 4th landing on a, on a uh, Thursday. People are on vacation. They're out partying. They're grilling out. People have been setting off fireworks since like mid-June. Uh, but it is, it's a, yeah, it's a hot, beautiful time of year, and we get to celebrate on the 4th. And I hope you've all had a great uh, great week so far. Yeah, we were out of office last week putting on uh, one of our longest – no, not one of – our longest standing uh, camps there in Nashville. Had an amazing time. Had I mean, it was hot, but we had great weather. Nothing was deterred by uh, rain or storms. And we had you know two pool sessions all to ourselves with the Natchez Trace, Percy Warner, which is just, you know, people – I think even me, like when I get out there, like I, I forget having ridden there so long, you know, and you know, I lived there, like you just forget how amazing it is and mm-hmm. tough. Yeah. <laughs> you forget how amazing and tough it is with such limited traffic, no stop signs, no stop lights, perfect pavement. Um, and then I think a lot of people are also quickly reminded that love to be on the trainer 24 seven and never shift gears that you would do in fact need to shift gears on your bike yeah. uh, and how important it is to do that. It's a, just a great training environment, beautiful place, hard, challenging. Uh, and then obviously when we run a Percy Warner, it is a lot of the same. Uh, and yeah, we got, we got challenging weather and challenging conditions, but that's what, that's what, uh, that's what we do this, honestly. So if everything was 55 and 60, I don't think we'd appreciate those days nearly as much. Yeah. We had a great time. Uh, last week and, uh, you know, one of my highlights of the event was, or of the weekend was, was you doing your tour de France move on Saturday, late in the day, taking the yellow Jersey at the end of camp. <laughs> was that the polka dot or the, um, <laughs> Oh yeah. It, was, it would be the, you're the king of the I mountains got, Jersey. Yeah. You yeah, definitely, definitely uh, pipped it on top. Well, it was the t- first day of the tour and I just thought I would make an attack just for fun. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> but, and I, and then, you know, Snell caught me at, at the bottom and I was like, he goes, I just let you go. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> I, like, yeah. I mean, if you're just king of the mountain, it's all about getting the summit first. The downhill doesn't yeah, matter. That was it. I mean, I had a, two points right there, bro. Exactly. I got two points two in my points bank. Up. You know, I was thinking about the trace, dude. You know, we used to ride it all the time, right? And we used to do a lot of pace lining out there. Yeah. And we'd just get after it and go. and go. Like, it's not, it, you know... It's easy to say it's not easy, but it's a tough, you know, that, especially that first 12, 13 miles that we ride a lot is, uh, there's nothing flat, you know, um, even the downhills are not, I mean, there's a couple obviously fast ones, but they're not like super steep. It's all Mm -hmm. like, it's all, it's kind of like constant pressure out there, even though there's a lot of hills, you know what I mean? And I realized that shit, you just can't, it's not really easy to get like a fast speed. Even when we were pace line, and I feel like our our speeds weren't even like that impressive, you know. No, I mean it, I, I love it because, like you said, there you're, there's there's constant there's constant pressure both on the pedals and and in the head, mm-hmm. and you can't you can't take any because there is like as much as it's you know rolling and there's there's no there's barely any cars there's no stoplights there's no stop signs there's no right and left turns there's no U turns it's just straight shots baby. Mm-hmm. You, it is. It's. It's all. It's. It's curvy, right? It's curves. It's weaves. It's terrain. You are. You're. You're legit. Never in a groove. You know. And even it, once you get out past 15, 16, even then, like there's false flats. There's curves. There's winds. It's just always something to interrupt it. And you. You just can't go. It. It reminds me a lot of. Um, I want to say a lot of Wisconsin. Um, and I mean the roads are significantly better, but it reminds like you, there. There is. There's no moment to daydream. You know, like even you go on the flats, right? Or you just can kind of put your head down, not even like look up at the road sometimes and just keep your eyes down and look at your Garmin or whatever bike computer you have. And you just can kind of zone out for a minute. Well, yeah. you can't do that on the trace because there's, there's again, it's it's curves left. You, you always have to be aware. So I think that's it's just a great place to, to practice all those things in a, in a you know, near, in my opinion, nearly perfect uh, environment. So yeah, it was a, it was a great time. Um, and always one of my favorite, uh, favorite camps, uh, to hit up, but we got, so we got a good topic today, but before we get into that, it's been a while since we did an intro. So if it's your first time tuning in today, 
welcome. We appreciate you giving us your time. We know you have quite a lot of options in the triathlon podcast universe and just podcasts in general. Time is very valuable. So appreciate you tuning in today. We cover it all. We do swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We do race recaps and also a lot of race previews. But for the most part, Mike and I as coaches, athletes, best friends, we just sit back, relax, have an open honest discussion about what we're going through in life, not just as human beings, but also as coaches and athletes ourselves. Uh, Mike and I also talk frequently about uh, about what our own athletes are going through. He and I work with a wide range of athletes all across the globe from beginner beginner level athletes in the very first 5K or sprint triathlon all the way up through elite level amateurs trying to get back to our championships and everyone in between from all over the globe. We'll use the feedback loop we have with them and training peaks, emails, text messages, and like to drive the discussion of the day. We also like to utilize our Facebook group. You can search that, Crushing Iron Group. Answer multiple question. We'll let you right in. Awesome people, fantastic community, solid resource in a sport that that is oftentimes way overcomplicated and way too confusing. It is a safe, actionable space to get great information, ask questions, get solid answers, and uh, from people who have been around the block and done this. So you get a, a wide range of, of people in there as well to give you great feedback and, and great opinions on, on things to hopefully help you uh, avoid some of the pitfalls and obstacles we've uh, we've all made uh, along the way. So be a part of that group. Don't be a lurker. Be a participant. And we go in there about uh, once every three to six weeks, do a bit of a Q&A, take questions from the community, do our best to answer as many of them as possible. And that is it. We have no sponsors and we have no ads, but we're pretty transparent about our agenda. And that's to do our best to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey. Right. Yeah. And um, we were kind of talking about it beforehand, but, you know, we just keep showing up and doing this podcast. And like you were saying, it's like, you know, maybe some award winning shit or whatever. We could probably get a, uh, a lot more, uh, I guess, attention by, you know, doing more like 10 best ways to, you know, fill your tire or whatever. But we just kind of keep showing up and doing it. And, and, you know, it's sort of been the muscle behind everything we've done. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how, you know, work, the, the types of workouts we do at camp are the similar, you know, it's not always the flashy shit, but it's just sort of showing up every day and doing work and knowing deep in your heart that, you know, you're doing the right thing for, mm. for yourself, for other people, whatever it may be. And that to me is a big deal. And I think a lot more people should probably realize that, you know, it's, you know, we always, it's easy to get caught up in, you know, how fast you went today or whatever, but do you, can you take it a step further and realize that uh, what you're doing today is the right thing for the, for your goals or your long term? You know, I, we, in listen, in the, seven, eight years we've been doing this podcast and, and seven, you know, almost 800 episodes. We talk about a lot of stuff. Um, we talk about a lot of life. We talk a lot about uh, the sport, right? Swimming, cycling, running, strength training, nutrition, you know, nutrition. I have a few guests on the mindset, race recaps, race previews, anything and everything that has to do with the sport. And, you know, a lot of times I know we can be hard on you, the listener and, ch and, and challenging you. Um, we do the same thing with our athletes. It's not challenging out of, a a, a dictatorship type mentality or a, uh, you know, a megaphone yell, right? That's not how we, that's not how, who we are and what we want for our athletes or you, the listener, but we do want, and I think is, you know, you and I would agree. And we talk about it a ton just with ourselves, with the other coaches is what we really want you to do is be fucking proud of yourself and to be happy with what you accomplish and to be happy and, and content with what you do. And I think, you know, you and I inherently, um, I think, I think in some areas of our, of our personal life and our professional life, this is a, a gift. Also, I think it's, you know, sometimes is a, is a pitfall that we never get really too high. We never get too low. Um, I think we're both fairly hard on ourselves with things, but when it comes to the podcast, you know, we, we rarely ever take a, a, you know, a bird's eye view of, of what we've accomplished and done, you know, and I think the, the reason for that, and we've, we've touched on this a few times, right. We sat down at a coffee shop 
and you had to explain to me what a podcast was first, um, and what you do and what to order. And, you know, and we never had any goals. We didn't have goals to be millionaires. We didn't have goals to have, you know, X number of followers or X number of reviews by this time or interview every world champion in triathlon or everything. We just, just wanted to do it right. To have fun and connect and, and talk about life, which is what we had, you know, done before that and just do it, you know, without beverages in front of us, um, or at three crow. So we, we started doing it. And we, we just look at each podcast as, as showing up and just getting it done. We know for not every week, but for the most part, twice a week, we show up for an hour and neither one of us start the podcast saying we're going to crush it today. Yeah. Or this one's going to be terrible. We just show up and we see where it takes us. And, and on a, on a small, you know, level, just like today, you know, we'll get off and, and, you know, if we say, yeah, I went all right. <laughs> you know, like we never say, oh, that was terrible. Or that was the best one we've ever done. We just, yeah, I think I get that was all right. We got it done. We showed up. And I just, we, I keep having these conversations that I know you do too with athletes. And I had some over this weekend at, at camp and I had some post camp and had one this morning with an athlete about how, just how incredibly hard triathletes can be uh, on ourselves with comparisons and expectations and, and, you know, rarely looking at the positives. Right. And, and I just, I think it's, you know, at the same, you know, while you and I, like before the cast, you know, we could look back and say, man, that's, it's pretty fucking impressive what we've done. Uh, but we, I don't want to say we did it on accident, but the people that show up to our camps, the, 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 the emails we get, the messages we get, None of them were planned. We just, it just ended up happening because we decided to just show up. And I think not getting too high and getting too low is, is a, is a skill some people need to learn, but it is, it is in fact, one of the greatest skills you can learn as an athlete is to have that, that, that cornerback mentality, right? The short memory, right? You got to pick, you know, I got to pick six short, you know, short memory, move on to the next one. You might give up a touchdown, give up a long ball short memory, time to get back to work, you know, but triathletes, we seem to gravitate towards every rough session and especially comparing not just every session, but every interval, every second within every session. And, you know, you and I both have been doing this for a long time. And the, the, the joy that I get out of training is, is the joy of, of the work, especially this time of year when it's, when it's nasty, you know, a lot of places, that's my, almost my favorite. My favorite times of year to train are this time of year when it's just nasty outside and then when it's freezing cold. Because it it removes all the, to me, to me, it removes any pressure or expectation or goal. The goal is simple, is to finish. Pace correctly, fuel well, finish. It doesn't get any easier than that. But what happens with with a lot of athletes is they immediately start to compare. Where is my heart rate? Where is my you know where is my fitness? So and so's doing this. I feel like I should be you know doing this. And you know it's always good I think to ask like you know where where does it come from? You know what where does that where, where do you think you know when you think I should be faster? You think it's and go where does it come from? And are are you taking the opportunities to see the positives and to be proud of yourself and to see how far you've really come? Not just seeing what you might not have reached in the moment. Yeah. Did I lose you? No. I th- oh, you're done? Yeah, I was done. Sorry. I know I went, I was, I was, I was going to keep going, but. Uh, that, that inflection I, threw yeah. me off. I oh. thought you were just, <laughs> usually uh, we're pretty good at that. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, 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 I, I, no, I'm, I could keep going, but I didn't want to because uh, I was, I wasn't going to shut up for a bit. So I, I just want to say, because you said it, um, you know, w- about the podcast and I, I always, you know, obviously we're big analogy people and everything like that. And we, we started the podcast really with, I think with just one goal, cause we said it and it's amazing to me that we, I think we said it at the start. It's like, all right, well, we're just going to do two a week. And do it for like, I don't know, maybe we had 30, we, I don't know, something, but we just, it wasn't like we had the, we weren't, we weren't approaching it like we're going to do this to make a lot of money or whatever. We didn't even know. Right. So that's what I keep thinking about with training is, is, you know, we can kind of like, you know, you always hear about, you know, setting a clear goal, 
you know, people set goals all the time, but do you have it really clean and clear? And for us it was just to keep doing two a week. <laughs> I mean, that was a pretty simple goal because then, you know, with training, I feel it's the same way. Just keep showing up for the workouts and then just take what comes with it, you know? But I think, you know, when we start kind of muddying the waters with, you know, I want to, you know, try kelk this and I want to make sure my FTP gets to this and all that sort of stuff, like way, way in advance. I mean, I think it's good to have a general sort of, you know, goal to get better, but mm -hmm. it's almost like you, you just do what's in front of you and understand and have faith that that is going to lead to what you need. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's, it's just so, I think we can get so much mental paralysis if we are always thinking about like how every single workout impacts a goal to, you know, go whatever, 20 miles an hour on a bike or something like that. You know, it's just, it just muddies the water, but like, um, and it, life is just so much easier. I think when you have a clean vision of what you're, you know, you're trying to do. And, you know, it's like for me, I, you know, they always talk about do something for consistently for a month or two months and just see how that works out. You know, I think a lot of people in this world could benefit from that, not overanalyzing every single workout or whatever, just showing up and doing the workout to the best of your ability that day and just see what happens and, you know, track it and look back 30 days or 40 days. I mean, I've talked about, you know, we talked about before the podcast is 10 weeks or so to Wisconsin. And I know for a fact if I can just be consistent right now, I will have, you know, probably a decent race, you know, and I'm not going to try and get too high on that or too low on that, but like, just, you know, you can't make your race, you know, 10 weeks away with one workout or two work, you know, it's just, it's gotta be showing up. And like you said, man, get, find the joy in the work and know that what you're doing is the right shit and not being completely wore out all the time, just because, you're chasing some kind of invisible hope. Pride in the process is what you have to focus on the most. And, and, and it's funny cause like a lot of athletes, you know, like, Oh, that's, that's too soft. Like that's not specific enough. Like, well, it is the most specific thing you can focus on is to have pride in the process and to be content with the work. Because when you do that, it adds up the, the limiters that I find and that I talk, the, the majority of the time I spend chatting with athletes has nothing to do about how fast are we getting, why aren't we get, or why aren't we getting faster, or your FTP needs to get, need to go up, or we need to improve your VO2 max, or you know your metabolic flexibility is very poor. It's about being proud of the work they're doing. And I just had a conversation this morning with an athlete, and I said, "Listen, I'm just tell you right now, you have front of the pack." top three in your age group at any race on the planet, fitness, inability, from the chin down. From the chin up, you have the back, you're the back of the back. You are more negative than normal. You are grumpier than normal. You're not seeing as much positive than normal as, as usual. That's because I think it's, it's interesting, right? Because a lot of people think that the body is the key, but it's not. It's the mind. The mind is the key that unlocks the body and you can have the greatest fitness on the planet, but if your mind fails to unlock it, it won't matter. You can have the wrong key. You put in the wrong keyhole. You could have 28 keys, which is what most athletes have, like trying to see which one works. I think it's this one, maybe this one, I want to be this one, but it's not this one. And they spend, you know, weeks and weeks and months using a key and a door to unlock something. They don't even, there's, no, there's nothing behind that door. You haven't done any work to get behind that door. And this athlete, you know, specifically has, has had a lot of a lot of ups, a lot of of downs, uh, not many ups in the last year. But we, but they forget that, right? We forget that. I forget that. You know, coming from uh, an alcoholic, right, who wasn't consistent in anything except for drinking. Um, Ten years sober, we in doing a podcast, just like like in in a in the small dose, like each and day, like I don't think about it. But then, like when I look back on it, I'm like, man, that's. It's pretty freaking great. You know, like you don't, you don't, the, the individual, the, the minute, the, the day-to-day -day specifics of it, they sh honestly, they should not resonate. Right. But the sum of everything you do 
shouldn't just resonate. It should it should move you. It should be something that you're really, really proud of to look back. And again, we you could be an athlete who's trained for eight, nine, 10, 11 years or eight, nine, 10, 11 months. And no, and undoubtedly you've even proved somewhere along the way. But what most athletes focus on is, is the lack because, because when you focus on a lack of improvement, it's not a lack of improvement. It's a lack of fulfilling what you hoped for tomorrow or today. And the only person you're, you're, you're unjustly, you know, it, um, it affecting is yourself. And I, I just think that there's, there's so much room for disconnect with, you know, had an, an athlete, you know, who's trained for Lake Placid and they had a, an awesome bike ride on Saturday, amazing bike ride, missed the brick. And then apparently had a poor run on Sunday, but didn't comment on the, on the great ride. The only comments on the poor run. I just said, so are, what are we doing here? Are we just going to comment on our bad sessions or are we going to give ourselves praise for the good ones? And they said, well, I, I had a good ride and then I was looking on Strava and saw so-and-so doing this and I just got really dejected. I said, get off Strava. Yeah. You know, like, I think eight, 80% of the messages that I, I know you we both send in Training Peaks isn't, hey, you know what, man? You really nailed that third interval. You, you nailed it. It was perfectly done. The intensity factor was right on. You kept things close. Your heart rate was down. It wasn't much drift as last time. It's, I'm really proud of the work you're getting done right now. Because mm-hmm. that's how you motivate people. The, the, the intervals take care of themselves. The work takes care of themselves. It's getting people out of their own way mentally that requires <laughs> that requires moving mountains sometimes with people. It is getting them out of their own way when they're in funks or when they're too high or they're too low, right? Because it also goes with with overtraining, right? I'm, I'm, I told them this today. It's like, I know we're getting great fitness and they're just jazz. They're crushing their goals or they're seeing insane fitness. And I just, hey, remember... Remember what, what got us here, right? Easy needs to be easy. Hard needs to be hard. So you need to remember that. It's it's from the chin up. The, the, the amount of work that coaches do is for the most part on the chin up. The results come from the chin down. But again, you cannot unlock that on your, uh, you know, unless you're, you're right from the chin up. And on race day, the only place you're going to live is up top. There's not going to be a coach. You can't text asking for permission or ask what to do on this interval or ask what to do about the the situation you're in. It's you. And if you if you spend weeks and months and years, I know somebody that's been years like that, so hard on themselves, then nothing good can come from what you accomplish. The 20 mile an hour goal. Guess what's going to come right after that? The 21 mile an hour goal. So you're te- you're, you're never satisfied. Never satisfied you know i was i was watching uh i haven't finished yet so no no spoilers here but i was watching the start of the tour this morning and jonas vinigo who won it last year had just an insane I mean, you know who he is you're a big unchained fan oh yeah he had, I'm a, watching. He had an insane the bike wreck last uh, in april i think right where he i mean looks like i mean he very easily could have died and he was in the hospital for a long time and this is his first race back and they were interviewing before the race start and he got like all choked up just being happy to be there. Mm. And I predict even not racing, he's going to demolish everyone. Even though he missed training, I have a feeling like being a, obviously he's won it before, so he's no slouch. But I think with that <laughs> mentality, I think it's going to even unlock even more. And you see this all the time with professional athletes, age group athletes, un, the freedom to unlock Right. The freedom, honestly, the freedom to be free. Right. And not be so, so reined in and so um, overly focused on this. And and it is, I think we've, you know, we've gotten so obsessed and distracted by over specialization and over weighting certain things and, and metrics and data. And, you know, if you look at all of it, half of it's just propaganda anyway. What are people trying to sell? And they're trying to people trying to stay relevant. What do people want you to buy? What what software do they need you to have? What additional metrics and training piece do you want to have extra for? You know, is it really needed? You go back. I know we say this all the time, but go back. You know, go back in the day. Mark Allen working off a spreadsheet and a Timex watch and heart rate. You know, on a bike that you know was probably twenty percent slower than any bike that anyone owns that we're listening to right now. Mm-hmm. Yet anyone that's listening right now wouldn't even come close to beating him. It was work. 
It was the work they put in. Even like going back and listening to the podcast of both of them, like the, the, the buy-in of the process, right? Going 10 to 12 weeks at a time running as slow as possible within the slowest heart rate imaginable, they would do it. Yet athletes – you know, today we want instant gratification and I don't think it's gratification. I think it's, we want instant expectations, Matt. And I, I think it's, it should be a great exercise this time of year, every time of year to always ask it, yourselves additional questions, right? You know, I had an athlete earlier or Monday come back who, you know, who's, I think is just doing incredible. It's like, yeah, I'm just really pumped with what my cycling and swimming is right now, but you know, I can't seem to do, you know, this, this specific pace on my run. And they ran for an hour. I said, we, you do realize when we started working there last year that you weren't allowed to run, period. Mm. You weren't run for a year. You weren't even allowed to run before we started working you there. And that was like the biggest concern, not just of, of, of you, but your parents when they started to get a coach was like, are they going to be careful? Are they going to make sure you're doing this the right way? Remember, it's a whole sport. And they also got like a huge move. I was like, we just, we, we failed to see all these incredible things. Cause again, like, we, as an athlete, right, we talk about the, the totality of the podcast and the amount we've done. And, um, you know, you, it's easy to get lost in that. Right. I mean, but I was, I was reminded of that on Saturday, you know, the impact of how long we've been doing this. We pulled up on the trace and Robbie Krausen was there, an athlete who's been on the team before. It was awesome to see him from, you know, he's been, you know, C26 guy for, you know, eight, nine, seven, eight years. And then Teresa Steele, right. We ran, ran into her mm-hmm. who, who was used to come to the, to the open water swim clinics mm-hmm. the, that we did what, 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago there. Same ones that you and that, that I ran that you came to the first year we, we, and they're like, you're giving them hugs. And I was like that, like moments like that, I think is what rem, is like, what kind of gives you a nice little shot of like, don't like, don't forget that it's not the spectacular. It's the, it, it's just the consistent work. It's the just showing up. And as athletes, you know, when, when you look at, at the improvement, right. And you look to wanting to go faster, let's, that's a goal for everybody. It's a coach's job, right. It's to make you faster, make you healthier, make you stronger, make you faster and to get it done. But the, the biggest piece that I think coaches can offer and that I know that you and I both focus on is, is the accountability to oneself and to getting you out of, 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 a, of a way. And I think a lot of athletes chase, chase the race, right. And, and, and they have to have a race and there's, there's this, there's this window and, and gap, I think, in, in triathlon endurance sports and really just coaching and people feel like they need to wait Right. They, 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 they need a race to train for, right. They need something to, to, to focus on and they don't feel like they can get a coach or a plan until that day happens. Or really what you need someone is to hold you accountable to you. Right. And not just accountable to you, but to maybe rearrange things and to really be a sounding board and to shift your focus to what's appropriate, what's healthy and what's positive. Because the longer you do things alone, the more likely you are to, you know, succumb to your own devices. You know, which for most people is negativity or be, or being sedentary, right? There's there's a lot of ways to to push forward, and a lot of people fail to move. Period, because they feel like they have to have this grandiose goal, right? To to run a you know a sub seven minute mile, or to finish an Ironman, or to to break six and a half hours in seventy point three. But it's funny because like when you talk to athletes, like a lot of them can't get themselves there, so they don't get started. But then once they start, it's the only measure of success. When months before they hadn't even started, mm-hmm. we just we get lost so incredibly quick on that on that journey to success, not because not because the path is wrong, but because what we expect and what we want from the destination is unfair. And when you when you look again at the, the best athletes in the world and how they do things, they they ride their bike for fun, they love to hit the trails and running, they hop in the pool with friends, they do it because they love it. Because it's a way of life. And if there was anything in your way of life that you thought was counterproductive and always negative, or if you're talking to your friends, your best friends, your peers, your coworkers, or your kids, and they kept telling you, and they didn't name what it was, like, yeah, just it's always negative. I'm, it makes me never proud of myself. It makes me always very self-critical. You would tell them to disengage. Break up with whatever that is. Right? 
And the sport doesn't have to be this way. And life sure as hell doesn't have to be that way. It, it should be something where you find that positive. And if you can't do that, and I know you and I have both done this, is I, I've I've told Addison before, like if you make one more negative comment in your training peaks like that, then we're not working together anymore. Mm. It's not it's not fun for a coach either to watch someone constantly barrage themselves and that they're never good enough or never fast enough. And well, let me be honest with you. Of course you're not. Listen to yourself. Yeah, no shit. The mind is the most powerful thing in the planet. So when you use it as a weapon against yourself, why are you surprised when you fail? Or that your body responds negatively, slower, you know, fatigued, inflamed, disengaged, doesn't recover well. Look up top. Stop being obsessed with your body and your Normatec boots and your Theraguns and whatever it is. Look at your look at your mind. Your mind carries you. It's the same thing. We, and also it's the same thing we see at camp all the time. People overcoming obstacles, coming back. We had, a, we had an athlete there who, who is in the past terrified of downhills. Stopped, on the, stopped midway on the incline last year on a trace, and I had to kind of like help her get down to the bottom because she just broke down. You know what she did immediately when she got done with camp last year? Signed up for this year. No <laughs> fear. The mm -hmm. goal is to get better. And this year, freaking <clears throat> rocked it. Yeah. Riding the chase like it was like it was, you know, a pancake flat day in the parking lot. And like if you if you can't find the joy in in the in those kind of wins, again, not a speed land record, not a not a Strava PR, not a sprint podium, but a personal win. And you're not measuring those the right way, then you're, you know, it's not that you're not finding wins, that you're measuring wins incorrectly, so you're always finding losses. Yeah, and, you know, um, you think about a lot of times, you know, you're talking about athlete comments and things like that, and um, it's real hot out, and, you know, that workout sucked kind of comments and shit like that, and I'm kind of like, good, good. Because you're talking about the mental game right now, and that's like super close to my heart. I just, I'm just so into the idea because, like you're saying, negative thought and negative energy it just takes so much energy. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're like not believing in something, it's just tense, tensing up your body and all this kind of stuff. You know, when we went out riding. I think it was the Saturday ride. It was a longer ride. And, uh, one of the things I just decided to do because I, you know, it's early, I'm not a real early morning. I'm just trying to be patient out there and just kind of like get into the ride and let it happen. And it's almost like a forced patience. And I, I really appreciate those situations. And like you're saying before about how, when, when it's super hot, you love it because you don't really have to think about your watch. You don't have to worry about your pace, but people do. And, it, when they don't see the numbers they want to see, <clears throat> it can be frustrating, but it's a really, think about it. You know, you just, you mentioned Mark Allen and how those guys were great at, you know, taking it easy, running slow and then running hard when they're doing hard work when they had to. It's a built in excuse to just take it easy. I mean, it's like a good practice and it's a good opportunity to kind of take it, you know, easy on your body and not shell yourself every time, you know, it's, it's so tempting. I think like, people will get in this mindset and I've done it and there's certainly, you know, and you've done it. I'm sure it's like, Oh, it's so ridiculously hot out. It's, and I didn't get my run in this morning. I'm doing it in the hottest part of the day. I'm going to go out and prove that I can just shell this damn thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the next thing you know, you're, you're down for like three days because you had to prove something to somebody, but who, you know, that's mm -hmm. the weird part is like, what are we doing sometimes? We, I think it's just like, and to me, it's, it's uh, sort of like building, we have to build our self-confidence to understand that we don't have to beat ourselves up. I mean, that's sort of an addictive nature is like, I'm going to shell myself today. I'm going to, you know, make myself feel like shit just because I deserve it or something weird like that. And you talk about, you know, being free. So I guess the point of my whole story about the trace is starting out slow. I let everybody go. And then I kind of slowly warm up and I'd take my chance, you know, take my spots to push it a little bit. And I started feeling really good towards the end there. And I felt like at the end I could have gone a lot further 
But in the beginning, I didn't feel like I could do anything. You know, so it's like a... I, I just, I think if we give our bodies what they need and, and can get our mind straight and be okay with not having a, sh- you know, having a kind of off day and that workout sucked, that's good. That's good practice. You know what I mean? That's, that's how, how do you reframe that as in, oh, I got through that. It wasn't the best ever, but that's exactly what you're going to face in races, especially long distance stuff. Those moments. So you're, you're, you may not be going as fast as you want, but you're, you're, like you're saying, you're training what's above the chin to kind of figure out a way. And that's just so much of this sport is just figuring out a way. You know, I started getting cramps. I started doing this. I was overheating, blah, blah. Well, figure, how are you going to get through it, you know? Because, you know, we see it all the time. People figure out a solution. And I think you need to practice that. And it's about having a a healthy, objective conversation with your body. Right. Not telling it what, you know, not arguing with it, right? Not telling it what it should do and being mad that it didn't, right? It's also, it's, it's, it's knowing and understanding that, it, that it, is a, it is a conversation in a while. Your mind might want one thing. Ultimately, it's your body's decision to either react and respond or defy, and that goes both ways, right? Mm. You can want your body to be incredible today, and, and chances are it's not. It's going to be mediocre or terrible. But at the same time, you you could say, yeah, I, I'm really not going to have it today. You know, I don't expect much, and all of a sudden you're out there breaking records. You know, but it's about listening, right? It's not about telling or igno- or even worse, ignoring, right, the signals that your body's telling you. Right, because you want this. It, it's such a massive disconnect, right? The the least important piece that you should be paying attention to in your body is your wrist. The constant looking at the walk, the constant looking at the pace, the constant everything. It's a disconnect. Because all you're thinking about is what is this device on my wrist going to say? Not what is my body telling me? How is it responding? What does it tell me that I can or can't do? Does it tell me I can keep pushing? Does it tell me I need, you need longer to warm up? Is it telling me that I'm feeling really good today? Is it telling me that I'm getting really hot? Is it telling me that I'm prepared today or I'm unprepared? It, your body tells you all, all things, but we, we fail to listen. And that, and that to me is the, um, you know, is, is one of the biggest pitfalls that we can have, especially once you get into longer distances that are more challenging, the harder the race is, is, is how there are so many fluctuations, right? You always have to be listening. And then you go back into training and you, and you remember, or you don't remember because it didn't happen, is, is how little we listen. You, know, you hop on your trainer, you put it in erg mode to do the shifting for you to make you hold a power, and you zone out on Netflix. There's, there's zero moments of being present. What's my, what's my legs telling me? What's, I, I just know I got it done at this. When the reality is, is maybe it would have been better that day to do it at, you know, instead of at 175 locked in, maybe do it at 160. Maybe feel better the next day. And you listen to your body and listen to those signals and what it's telling you and then see the result and the solution from paying attention. But it is the, it is the, uh, the constant, you know, we had to deal with it. This, this t- tons at camp. You know, the, the, it was, it was heat. It was a heat warning every day. The dew point was super high. The humidity was super high. And, you know, we had, we had two athletes there for that, that live at altitude. And, and we got done with that run of Persian. I was like, Hey, is, what's harder this or, or at home? They're like, Oh, this for sure. Dew point humidity. They're like, I don't even know what it's like to sweat. And everybody's dripping after like, you know, half a mile. And then you got people out there expecting to, to be faster and to do better. And, to me, it, it's in, and it's a failure in expectation. It's a failure in respecting yourself and remembering how far you've come. All right, I, th- I think we're all guilty of that. I know I am. You know, I, I forget. You know, plenty. You know, of I, or sometimes you know of how far I've come in my life or what I've overcome and who I am versus who I who I used to be. But there's always those little instances where that 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 old those those subconscious thoughts come in right? And you're not good enough, or you can't do this, or you know, you're going to fuck up or, you know, this won't work out, you know, and then you, you know, we either latch onto those, right? Or we objectively look at 
the most recent resume and think, okay, you know what? That's not gonna work. Like, you, you got your athlete, your athletic profile resume, and you know you look back and you know you're barely you're a guy that barely graduated high school, but since then has you know started and sold four different businesses and you've been super successful and you've, you know, you're well off and you go to apply for a job. And what do you think they're going to look at your, your drop? You're barely making out a high school GPA or your success since then. Look at your success. 100%. But that person probably looks way back in and thinks I'm, I'm probably not going to get this job because I'm a high school resume, you know? And I think athletes do this too. We, 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 we remember who we were and our identity is formed when we start. Are we overweight? Are we back at the pack? Do we suck at swimming? Do we struggle with hills? Are people looking at me? You know, what do they expect? I'm never going to get any faster. And then while we work, right, we get faster. And maybe our body composition changes or our mentality changes. Is that when things get hard, right, that fight or flight moment, we usually refer it back to not usually, but a lot of times we can, that, that original identity we, we formed when we got into the sport, you know, who we are, what we expect, how people see us, how we see ourselves. And, and as I was, as I was telling this athlete earlier, who I mentioned before, um, and I told them, I said, listen, it, it's funny how we, how we see ourselves. We see ourselves, how the world, how we think the world sees us. And we always fail to recognize and acknowledge what we believe our friends see in us. Our closest ones would tell you all the things that are great about you, but, you know, also probably tell you when things need to get your shit right. But we always think we always kind of use the world and and, and the universe or, or the mirror to tell us what we think about ourselves. We don't look for the for our, our good friends to reinforce or affirm how we're feeling or how we're thinking. Um, and we just don't do it enough. There, there, there's, you know, listen, I'm all for a good ass kicking. I think everybody is. Um, but, but I think, you know, a lot of times it's, you don't need to ass kicking. You need the person to turn around, look in the mirror and wipe the slate clean. What do you see? More importantly, what are you looking for? And why are you looking for it? And can you find it within an increase in pace or an increase in power or a faster swim spot? Yeah. And the answer, and the answer is no. The answer is no. You may find it for a moment, for a second, but then you're going to find a critique. The, the, the love is within the process. The, the pride is within the process, is getting the work done and being happy with the experience and the journey within it. The small moments, the 20-minute the, the runs, right? The ones that you don't think matter. Not the glorious, not the, you know, not the shiny ones. It's the, the, everything matters. In my opinion, everything honestly matters equally. Because the, if the 20-minute runs don't matter, then you're never going to do them. And if you skip into 20-minute runs and you could have done 60 this year, then guess what's going to matter more? Your lack of doing those 20 that you didn't that you didn't think are important, right? In the whole scheme of things, you're totally gonna you're gonna bypass those minutes. Everything matters, but that's why you should look at every day as it doesn't not it's not really big of a deal. Right. You just show up, you get the work done and be proud of yourself for getting it done. Because honestly, most people they are not doing anything. True. Yeah. I mean, I, lo- I always like that 20 minute thing because I've recently because I've always been into yoga and stuff. And I and it's just one of those things where, you know, I remember back when I was doing it like a lot. And, you know, recently I just decided that I put on the board, I'm just going to do five minutes a day. And then I'm going to do 10 minutes and it's just going to add up. And, it, you know, I just, I'm just want to be patient with it, you know? And as we talk about doing hard things and like this weekend, <clears throat> that running and how they said it, the heat and the, the dew point make it harder than altitude. <clears throat> I, my thing, you know, with, uh, you know, I was out there too and I hadn't run in a while and I, I felt pretty decent, you know? And I, um, I just, to me, it's so like, if you go into a workout going, fuck, it's going to be hot today. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. And it just becomes a loop in your head. Um, I think it just, it, I, you gotta be aware of it. Don't get me wrong, but 
like my thing about don't think about it. And that's what I was trying to do. I was just trying to be like, okay. And, and I don't think, you know, don't think about it means literally just be delusional. It's almost just like turn the page a little bit. It's like, all right, well, you know, cause I, you know, I worked in news for so long. <laughs> I just get like so annoyed now because anytime they have an opportunity, they're going to put like a heat warning on the television. You know, it's just like, infiltrating our brains and I just think we overthink it I mean like I don't ever remember you know it was hot when I was growing up but now it's just like always hot everybody's like overwhelmed it's just too much you know maybe it is getting hotter I don't know but I do think that there's something to be said for you know we go through the summer and it gets hotter and and you know and things might get harder or whatever but the more we obsess about stuff like that I think the more it just takes over and it makes things harder in general. You know, it's almost like, uh, you know, if it's cold out, you know, same type of deal. I mean, it goes both ways. It's like, you can't, don't give it so much credibility. You know what I mean? It's not like, I don't know. I just think everything is so amplified now that we get beat down before we even start sometimes. And there's been time, I mean, honestly, I, I, I also think it has to do with maybe what you've been doing the last two or three days before that. You know, if you went out the night before and you woke up and drank a bunch of coffee, it's going to be hotter, you know? So I guess just stay ahead of it a little bit or it, like you're, uh, approach it with, by listening to your body, especially, you know, if, if you go right away and it's hot as hell and you start going hard, you don't even give your body a chance to adapt really. And you're going to be in a furnace and then you're screwed. So I don't know. man. I don't even know what I'm saying. I just, I just think that like, sometimes I get so, I guess, frustrated with the things that just keep coming at us from whether it's, you know, the television or the news and it just keeps re you know, it just keeps trying to hypnotize you into believing some shit that, you know, I think we wouldn't even think about as much if we didn't pay attention to that. I was, I kept joking with people on Percy Warner. I was like, man, isn't it chilly out here? That's what I'm talking about. I was you like, I, th I, I feel like I should have brought a jacket. Um, cause even when you do stuff like that and you joke about it, it relieves, it relieves this kind of pressure from so what much. you're, yeah, what you're putting on it. Even if you know it's not true, if you can smile about it or laugh about it and do whatever, it's like, hey, well, you, um, you know, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, it's, we're not taking this super seriously. And honestly, that's the biggest thing about most of what we do. Yeah. Is to not take it so damn seriously. Uh, an athlete, I think before camp, is like, hey, I have, uh, I've got this um, opportunity to go out and open water swim. And instead of do the structured workout, what's, what's the most important thing to, for me to focus on? And I said, to have fun go out there and have fun because we, when you, because a lot of times we forget that you forget to have fun. We forget this supposed to be fun. And, and the more fun you're having, guess what? The more of it you're going to do and the longer you're going to do it for, which are the two, the top two statistics that tell you that you're going faster, going to get faster is by consistency, volume, and how long you can do it for years. It's not the perfect interval or the perfect balance. It's fun. It's making it fun, right? We just make this way, it's become way too serious in so many ways. Like, just go out and have fun. Go have fun. And if you're, if you're overcomplicating things, then guess what? You're not going to have fun because you're, you're focused on a number. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's one of those things that, um, you know, I think we all need to be reminded to. And while, you know, like things like campus last weekend, they were hard. It was really hard. But people also had fun. People were smiling and talking and laughing. But because it's also like when you're surrounded by people who are doing the same thing that you can also see are disconnected, right, from obsessing about what their watch is and just go out and having fun and going for a ripper or going for an easy time and just chatting the whole way, right, stopping, taking pictures. Like that is what we do. That is why we do this. This is supposed to be fun. 
and it makes you want to do it again the next time. Not when you, I expected this and I expected that, and then it was this and then it was that. Then all you can find are the negatives. You know, it's, it's the limiting expectations, limiting, you know, what you feel like you have to get out of a session. It, it doesn't close things off. It actually opens up possibilities to shine and succeed and to be happy and to have fun. And that to me is, is the, is the key to longevity in the sport and the people that I know that have, that have burnt out from the sport. They, it wasn't because they, they overtrained it wasn't because they did too much. Uh, it wasn't because they got too injured. It was because they overthought they wanted too much too often, too frequent, and they never had fun doing it. And of course I'd fuck, I get burnt out too. Right. Mm-hmm. Same thing with jobs, right? People, like if your job is fun and you have a good time and you, the expectations aren't super high, you know, like, oh, this, I can, I can roll with this. This have a pretty good imp- impact on my life versus, you know, a job that always has, you know, day to day expect you're going to grade it every day before you walk out of the building, you're going to get graded. Fuck. That sounds terrible. That's a lot of pressure. I'm going to dread going into it. I'm going to be nervous while I'm doing it. When I leave, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to be either like, you know, totally relieved that, um, you know, that, that I didn't get a failing grade or I'm going to wonder why I didn't do better than what I was graded. There's no middle ground of success. Right. And, and so again, like, you know, as we close, when you're looking at your week, when you're looking at your preparation, whether it's two weeks out from your big race or six months out or next year is your biggest race. The, the minute to minute work is what's most important. And, and that you take that mentality into your race. Take a minute to minute, second by second. Don't think about what this minute is going to do, you know, or ruin or make great. Just minute to minute, minute to minute decisions, minute to minute by minute successes. Do that. Focus on that. And that is, in fact, what is going to drive you to, um, you know, to, to a place where you're finding positives. You're looking for, for things to be okay. And if, it, and if a workout does go bad, you think of it for all of two seconds. And you move on. You click save. You knew it went poorly, and you move on with the day. You don't. You don't sit down at your laptop, open up Training Peaks, and stare at it for forty five minutes. You move on. You move on, and that's how you get better. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because that next day or two days later, you're gonna completely throw that upside down. You know what I mean? It just happens. It's yep. almost like uh, make consistency your fun. Exactly. Make consistency your fun. I like that. And we hope you guys all have fun on July 4th. Uh, be careful with fireworks. Um, be careful with your M80s, M100s. You know, use the sparklers. And if you don't follow any of the advice we've ever given, please finish setting off, setting off your fireworks by 10 p.m. <laughs> they're, I'm just telling you, they're just as exciting before 10 p.m. as they are at 1 a.m. In fact, they're more exciting. Because you're not waking any people up. And you're not fucking around with dogs. Dogs hate fireworks. So just be respectful of the canines. Be respectful of the people who want to get to bed at a decent at a decent hour. That's all I'm asking. And I feel like, I don't feel like that's too much to ask. No, I don't I mean, think it's not it's not gonna happen, but you know, a, a guy can wish. Yeah. Um, One of my least favorite holidays. Least favorite. <laughs> yeah. Let's let you know what? Let's set off a bunch of noisy shit after hours and wake up kids that are sleeping terrified dogs and wake people up i'm pumped i can't wait <laughs> hey man sometimes you gotta let it loose yeah i know well you know what let loose in the comfort of your own home with your jamie's on and a good book <laughs> that's all i'm saying <laughs> that's all right we love you guys we appreciate you uh we'll see you next week and as always uh go to our website c26 triathlon.com it's our one-stop shop for all things coaching camps and community if you need anything from mike he is available mike at c26 triathlon.com or if you need anything from me specifically robbie at c26 triathlon.com all right my man i'll catch you uh when yeah catch you later but we'll see you next week all right man see you all right